All right, hey guys, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over some of the stuff we did in our PM class yesterday um, so that everybody understands what we're doing. We're building a little bitty house here and it's 10 feet wide, 12 feet long. You guys are familiar with it. We built the subfloor. We've erected most of the walls or some of the walls here in this house. We did the exterior wall here with the sheathing on. We've done our interior, our exterior butt walls here. We didn't put our sheathing on our exterior butt walls for a couple reasons. One, we wanted to save some sheathing. And two, it's difficult. You can't install the sheathing on your butt wall when the wall's laying down. You have to wait till it's stood up because the sheathing starts out here and it would be in the way. So we let, we let the sheathing off. But while we're here, I wanna go over some of the parts of the wall again so everybody understands that. We saw them on diagrams. We've gone down to the house and seen it, but I feel like it's gonna be important to uh, see what, you know, after you've built it, it makes a little bit more sense. So if you look here, guys, we all know, who knows what that is? You guys know what that plate. is? The sole plate, right? So it's the bottom plate or the sole plate. This one right here, who remembers what that is? Common stud. A common stud, very good, Alex, all right? We have our common stud right there. This is our- Top plate. Our top plate. It's only a single top plate right now. After we've stood the walls, and some people, you can, you can double top plate some of the areas sometimes before you stand the walls. We didn't do that in this case. We're gonna double top plate it now. And in fact, I just took a video um, for due on Monday out on Canvas, and it's a video of me double top plating my tree house at home. So it shows how we intersect the overlaps on the double top plate here, which is gonna be important. That's a very important thing to do, installing the double top plate right. It really reinforces the corners, okay? So we have the single top plate, we're getting ready to install our double top plate after all the walls are constructed. And one of the main reasons for that is our interior wall here, we'll wanna run our double top plate over our interior wall all the way out here before we even put this double top plate on. So they intersect and when we're doing that, we'll make another video so you guys all see that. Um, the other parts here that we need to talk about, you guys remember what this is? Cripple stud. Cripple stud, right? How about this? Header. Header. Jack stud. Jack stud or trimmer stud we call it in this one here. King stud. All right, so this is beside, this is a door opening. This door opening here is a three foot door opening designed for a three foot entry door. So it's a 3068 door is what it would be specced as on a blueprint. That means it's the door blank itself, the actual, just the door, not the jam or anything else, just the door itself is 36 inches wide. So when we build our rough opening here, you guys remember we added, you guys remember what we added to 36? Does two anybody remember? What was it? Two and a half. Two and a half, very good, Alex. We added two and a half inches to our rough opening to accommodate for our jam thickness and a little bit of a gap there to uh, shim out our door when we go to install our door. Our frame might be, not be perfectly plumb, plumb and square, but when we put our door in, our actual door in, like we did down there at the pole barn, you noticed how much time we took making sure it was perfectly plumb, perfectly level, and you know, shut properly. So you spent a little bit more time trim, or, uh, shimming that out there. At the end here, the sole plate or the bottom plate, will cut this out, okay? We leave that on just to keep the wall square while we're standing it, and then at the end, we'll, we'll cut those out at the very end. We go around, here's another door opening, we'll cut out all the sill plates with a sawzall or a chain. I've seen guys use chainsaws too, but a sawzall works real well, um, and you cut it flush with the jack stud right there, all right? Over here, guys, um, we have a window opening. This is the window opening we talked about yesterday in the video when we did the wall layout. All right, we, we did our wall layout, we centered our window in the middle of the wall. This is the other classes. We didn't shoot this video, we did the other one yesterday. But we laid out the center of the window, okay? We centered our window, then we made it from the center of our building here, we made it 12 inches over this way, 12 inches over this way, then we laid out our jack stud and our king stud, and we installed all of our, we, after we laid all that out, we laid out our 16 inches on center, all right? We started our 16 inches on center, way out here at the exterior sheathing, and we pulled our tape measure. The edge of our stud here was 15 and a quarter inches. If we kept our tape measure hooked on out there, this one would be 31 and a quarter. But what we decided to do is we installed a nail there and then we measured over 16 and so on, 32, 48, and laid out our 16 inch centers. So some of the parts of the wall here again are our cripple, our top plate. What was this again? Header. Header, right? Does anybody remember what this is? Rough sill. Our sill, our rough sill, very good. And these two are called what? 
Cripple studs. Cripple studs, again, all right? So we have, again, our jacker trimmer, cripple, sill, header, cripple, top plate, bottom plate or sole plate, okay? Some of the other things I wanted to show you guys, when you're framing your interior walls, we frame some of the interior walls and they have to intersect here into the house, okay? So what we do is we install an what we refer to as an inside corner post right here. We have one of those made. All that is is two studs. We made our studs 91 and a half inches long in this house, so that's not exactly right, but we had to accommodate for a few things. So these are 91 and a half inches. Then we, then we installed just 12 inch blocks so that when the wall comes in here, you can see it's going to get fastened into these blocks. And right over here, we have one finished. This is multifunctional. Not only does it, not only does it serve to fasten this interior wall, this is the main bearing interior wall gets fastened to our exterior wall here, but it also serves as a drywall nailer. When we go to install our drywall across here, if we didn't have this stud in here, our drywall would just flat freely in the wind there, right? And it would be a it wouldn't make a very strong corner. So this is an inside corner that we've made here. We also made an outside corner. All right, so we did our outside corner a little differently. If you look, we don't have it finished here yet on this one, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna install 12 inch blocks, but we're gonna put them in this way, one here, one in the middle and one down there. Then we're gonna add another stud so that after, again, after we have it framed, our, our drywall will come across here and we'll have a spot to screw our drywall to reinforce our corners, okay? So those are two different kinds of corner posts that we build. One of them, the inside corners, the two by little two by four blocks are flat like this. And on the outside corners, they're going in this direction. So they're, they're positioned in different directions. There's other ways to build corners. There's even drywall clips, but this is a great way to get started to understand uh, how to build an inside and outside corner. All right, if we look a little further, this is the main bearing wall of our house, our little stairwell opening that we've created. And then we've created a door opening here. We're gonna install our ceiling joists. They're gonna splice over our main bearing wall here, but out here, we're gonna leave it wide open. So we'll have longer floor joists here or ceiling joists here. And then these ceiling joists will be able to splice over the wall, which when we build that, we'll show you guys, all right? So does anybody have any questions? A lot of stuff. We've reviewed all this many times, so we can, you guys have uh, studied this already, right? No one has any questions? All righty, well, we'll see you tomorrow then, thanks.